So, not to be dramatic, but um, this is about to be very dramatic. <laughs> this is philosophical, political, topical, uh, flash mob dance is just about as serious as you're going to get tonight, I think. It is of the utmost importance. It's very scary, first of all, as you can see. Um, the zombies coming up over the hill there. And it's monstrous in the sense that it evades definition. It raises questions. You, how is it even spelled? Is it one word? Is it two words? Why are we doing it? What are you doing? But that monstrous quality, that weirdness about it is what allows it to go on. Um, it's made up of a few different factors. Technology, it actually benefits from technology. Flash mob, which is just a gathering of people from all shapes, sizes, abilities to create a strange scene in a public space. Critical mass of people, a sense of humor, ability to roll with the punches. That's what matters in flash mob. People have tried to define it over the years. The mob project in New York City in 2003. People have tried to connect it to Dadaism, surrealism, because of some of the qualities sprinkled above. But even when it is a meditation on emptiness, it often is much more than that. And um, it's become, well, here I am. Um, so in case you were wondering, how did I come to this? Uh, I actually, even though it doesn't seem like it'd be too far of a cry from here, I was actually raised in the classical dance scene, but was drawn to improv and flash mob when I was studying disability politics and was interested in forms of dance and art that were all inclusive and didn't have an ideal body type. Started looking at Improv Everywhere, which is a group in New York City, started in 2001. Charlie Todd. Um, this whole group is just about fun prankster-dom and causing pranks that are only about getting people to pay attention. They're not about humiliating anyone. Um, they've done hundreds of pranks with hundreds of thousands of participants all over New York City, including um, the Grand Central Station freeze, where people all stopped in the middle of Grand Central Station, the No Pants subway ride, which is pretty self-explanatory, um, the Best Buy prank, where everyone showed up in the Best Buy shirts just to confuse people. Um, <laughs> They cause scenes. And so we, of course, when I was in college, wanted to do our own version of this, including walking across the field for two hours in gender-bending wedding attire, because college, and um, wearing opposing teams on the same shirt, and of course, doing flash mobs inside of libraries, dining halls, coffee shops, just for the point of getting people to take things less seriously. Thriller is a big part of that. Thrill the World is a national and now worldwide movement where people dance the thriller dance at the same second uh, to raise money for charity. And when we did this in college, we actually funded Women for Women International, and the founder went on to be our commencement speaker. And it was fun to tell her exactly how we raised that money. Um, we've done it for five years here in Santa Barbara, where we perform thriller all over to raise money for charity. This is at the Piano Kitchen. Um, 100% of the donations that come sponsorship style through this type of dancing go to local organizations and worldwide organizations. Uh, here is some images from our event here this year. All sorts of local color, the mayor, John Palminteri. Um, we raised more than $20,000 this year just by dancing like zombies for AHA, the local boys and girls clubs, and our educational funds in Rwanda. And a little bit more about Rwanda. Um, I actually had the opportunity to go this year to Rwanda to see what that meant, what dancing for money and raising money means, and how one Soho dance party can raise money for enough cows to feed 47 families. So that's one night of dancing equals that. And beyond that, being in Rwanda and seeing what we actually all have in common, which is this language, this dance. But the point of having flash mobs to lead into all of this is that they're inclusive. Um, why would we take over small department stores and um, parts of State Street, restaurant patios, so that people understand that anyone and everyone can participate in this and just have the shared experience of getting people to notice their surroundings? Big deal at the high school, where I've had the pleasure of teaching three times, uh, students who are really at the peak of their self-consciousness, <laughs> um, to get them to stop and realize that art is everywhere and to take themselves so much less seriously and join together over a shared experience of weird. Um, what I love about Flash Mob is that there's no ideal body, there's no one who does it. Going to nursing homes here and doing Flash Mobs and getting people to dance for the first time in 50 years simply because they're invited to. Uh, our age range in Thriller is usually anything from 5 to 80. 
Um, and there is no one way to do it. Whether it's raising awareness about something political, uh, as it often is, or just to go up to a megaphone in the middle of Central Park and say something nice, which is exactly what this is. Leave you to think about that for a second, <laughs> what you would say. These are some other examples of improv everywhere, um, which just raises the question, what happens when the lines are blurred between performer and audience? What happens when you don't know who's in on the secret? What if there is no secret? What if everyone is just involved and everybody's allowed to participate because they're there? Um, so this is happening in our community, whether it's Max Golding with his typewriter at the farmer's market saying, pick a poem, any price, or the Gorilla Dance Project, or World Dance for Humanity flash mobbing for One Million Rising. It's happening everywhere. Berlin, Buellton, uh, here. <laughs> and anyone and everyone can be involved. And anyone and everyone can really understand and respect what comes from this, which is saying yes, um, taking what's thrown at you and not seeing it as a discouragement, but as an opportunity. Because in a flash mob, if an elbow gets thrown in your face, you work with it. You learn to see everything that comes at you as an opportunity. Um, and it gets you to see everything around you as art and anyone around you as an artist. Um, and I really enjoy being that person who people say, aren't you the person that did the thing with the weird? And like, yeah, um, because it's fun. And without trying to be, they are. They're revolutionary because they're egalitarian. And um, I encourage you to participate because the spirit you save may be your own. Who knows? Thank you.